Hey everyone and welcome back to another comic series. Today I'm very happy to announce that four months later we have the third issue picking up right where we left off in this one, which I uploaded in March. Now if you haven't seen the story, you don't remember, please go watch it as you'll be caught up and it's a rather interesting story as Vader will go back to Naboo in this one and meet a lot of familiar faces from the prequels. Now to give you a quick rundown just in case you're not going to watch that video or you haven't seen it yet, this is all taking place between episode 5 and 6. This is right after Vader saw Luke and Luke denied his rightful heir as Vader's son to kill the Emperor and join him at the throne. So long story short after that, Vader ran into Sabe who, if you don't remember in episode 1, interchanged her roles a lot with Padme. She was the Queen's shadow, but a lot of the time she was impersonating the Queen herself so that Padme could be safe. They'd switch their roles quite a bit and they looked very, very similar. So Vader often thinks that Sabe is Padme, but then finds out that no, it was just the Queen's shadow. So without further ado, let's begin with the scroll. Dark Heart of the Sith, part three. Darth Vader revealed the truth. He is Luke Skywalker's father. But Luke refused Vader's call to the dark side of the Force and escaped. Enraged, Vader has taken a squad of Death Troopers and the Imperial Forensics droid Z-67 on a quest for revenge against everyone who hid Luke from him. Vader's bloody journey has revealed an unlikely ally, Sabe, Queen Padme Amidala's former handmaiden. Sabe has sworn to avenge her fallen queen. Now, Vader's quest into his son's past becomes a hunt for the truth of Padme's death. A hunt that compels Vader to return to Naboo. Lord Vader, we should carry on. The Naberi Lake retreats not far. Now, if you guys don't remember, this is basically where Padme took Anakin during episode two, where we saw them eating and exchanging food with the Force. Now, as Vader enters, he's hit with flashbacks of young Anakin and Padme falling in love with each other. But as he tries to reminisce just a little bit, he's interrupted as the crew come in to fire blasters at him. Stop! Put him down, Lord Vader. This is all a mistake. Please meet Captain Gregar Typho and Captain Tonra, formerly of the Royal Naboo Security Forces. I sent the all clear signal. Why did you attack? When we saw you were with Vader, we assumed you were under duress. Did you actually think you could kill him? No, but you might have had the chance to escape. The queen is long dead, Tonra, and I was but her shadow. Enough. No one attacks me and survives unless they prove their value. Why should I let these men live? Sabe tells Vader that the men are okay and that she had them in on deciphering the security recording from Padme's quarters, and that if he wishes to recover it, he'll need their help. The men open the door and they go down the stairs where the droid starts to insinuate that Typho might not be as loyal as he seems. Captain Typho, according to Imperial records stored in my databanks, you served as Padme's bodyguard during the Separatist crisis. Yet Padme was the target of multiple assassination attempts during your watch, twice during a single visit to Coruscant before the vote on creating an army. Are you questioning my loyalty to the Senator, droid? I am programmed for forensics and analysis, Captain. I am merely collecting relevant information. Now this is where it gets interesting, because they start to bring up Anakin Skywalker a lot. As Captain Typho tells the droid that they did their best to keep Padme safe and away from countless threats, he says the only two that really helped her were the handmaiden Corday and the Jedi Anakin Skywalker, who gave his own life a few years later. When did you last see Padme? Captain Typho tells Lord Vader that the last time he saw Padme was on Coruscant, after the clone troopers burned down the Jedi Temple, where she insisted on flying to Mustafar alone, saying that it was personal. We then get to the same model ship that we saw Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon and Jar Jar ride in Episode 1, which is a nice callback. Now this part is really nice, as the droid starts to interrogate Captain Tonra, you know, asking about his service to the Queen. When he says that he went undercover for Padme when him and Sabe were sent to Tatooine. Vader butts in and says, When was this? And it was actually just after Padme had become Senator where they actually were sent there to free Anakin's mother. Now a lot of you might not know this, but if you're a slave on Tatooine and you leave illegally, you'll blow up. All slaves had bombs put in them that if they left the planet, they would explode. Anakin's mother had vanished long before we arrived, but at least we were able to free a few dozen poor souls. It remains the greatest shame of my life that we couldn't do more. Now we know Vader's getting very touchy here as he's starting to grab his lightsaber because they couldn't save Anakin's mother. 
Now, it's at this moment they're attacked by a Kolo Clawfish, which is the same fish that we saw in Episode 1 with Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Jar Jar. As it breaks through the ship, they all escape except for Vader, who goes directly into the beast's throat, igniting his crimson blade and slicing through it. Now, this also goes to show that Vader can breathe underwater, if you didn't know. His suit allows him to breathe pretty much in any sort of medium. When they get to safety, we can see this beautiful mural on the wall. It's a tribute with Little Annie, Obi-Wan, Padme, Boss Nass, Palpatine, Captain Panaka, Jar Jar, and Bruce Tarpals. That was Anakin, the Jedi that Typho mentioned. Even as a child, he served our queen. After she died, he vanished. We mourn his loss as we mourn hers. <laughs> Now at this point, you know Vader's just enraged, and he just slashes the wall and brick with his lightsaber, embracing the dark side, really upset at the fact that Anakin is dead and his life has just ended up like this, and for what the Jedi did to him. He blames Sidious, he blames himself, he blames the Jedi. Enough of this. Where are the recordings? You swear you'll use them to avenge her death? The handmaidens and guards of Naboo were trained in diplomacy and deception. You will not bargain with me. So they take out the recordings, hand it to the droid, and play it. And here we are, the missing surveillance data from Padme's apartment. It is time, friends. Padme. Actually, according to biometric image analysis, this is Sabe, many years younger. And assorted friends, including Captains Tonra and Typho. Tonight, we call ourselves Amidalans, and together we pledge to find whoever murdered our queen and kill them. So we swear. And this is where everything turns on Vader. He starts to realize what's really going on. As this hologram, this recording, really isn't anything special. It's just showing that they formed a pact as the Amidalans to avenge her death and to find whoever killed her and kill them. And in their mind, they just did. This whole thing was a ruse to get Vader in one spot, an enclosed location where they could kill him. Explain yourselves. I told you, Vader. The last time I saw Padme, she was heading to Mustafar to find Skywalker. Years later, we learned that Mustafar was your domain. You killed them, didn't you? Of course I did. Now, Dora, I've got it. For Padme. And for Anakin. Now, obviously Vader's gonna kill all those people in there. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually lets Sabe live just because she looks so much like Padme, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna kill all of them. He's gonna get swallowed by the beast, break his way out of there, and then that's when the story really starts in my opinion because he's gonna be on Naboo, most likely all alone, and I wonder where he's going to go. Well, in the fifth issue, it's written that we're actually supposed to get Vader to go to Padme's tomb, which sounds kind of familiar to me. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this comic. I can't wait for the next one, and you can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to be covering it and bringing it to life. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.